Welcome to Richmond Events Podcast, Leaders in the Industry, where we sit together with top-notch leaders discussing important topics in the HR, IT, marketing, finance and healthcare industry. Today's topic will be mainly about FINMA license. For this, we have invited Nicolas Ramele from Ramele Legal to talk about what it takes to be a leader in this industry. Sit back and enjoy. Let me talk shortly about his CV, Nicolas Ramele, mainly advise companies and entrepreneurs in the sectors of traditional financial market companies, as well as fintech startups in the field of financial market regulation, also regarding the distinction of regulated and non-regulated business activities. He lectures at the Institute of Financial Services in Zug of Lucerne University of Applied Sciences. Nicholas is also a member of National and Cantonal Working Group for Financial Market Matters. He is involved in legislative projects and regularly publishes in his fields of expertise. So a great CV and it's great to have you here. Let's start with the first question, Nicholas. What makes a good leader in your eyes? So thank you very much for having me. So what makes a good leader. I think every leader is in fact a good leader. The problem is that some individuals that are in leader positions are actually not being leaders. They might be managers, they are superiors, but in my view, this is not necessarily leadership. Leadership, in my view, is leading by example, pulling from the front. So I've had CEO positions in my previous job assignments. And I have had experienced firsthand the difficulty of being a leader every day and all day. But what I've learned is that it really pays off. It is difficult, but then on your weekdays, you will be pulled by your entire team to help you stay in the driver's seat. So this to me is leadership. Okay. Especially in the financial industry, it's not really easy to be a leader. So how did you enter to the financial industry and what continuously inspires you to keep working in this field? Well, that is probably a very boring story. So in fact, I got hooked up went with the financial market in my first job at the law firm. And I've never looked back since. This was over 15 years ago now, and uh, I do not plan on leaving the financial market in the next 15 years to come. And I would say through different jobs, I've seen the financial market and its legal framework from probably all perspectives. And I still enjoy seeing how the big picture is actually like a puzzle put together by many pieces, each piece essential to each other piece, and they perfectly fit together. So every day at work for me is, is exciting and every day and every task is an opportunity to help foster the financial market. And as you know, there's, there are many changes in the financial industry. So I think really not boring. So what do you see in the future for the FINMA license? Because this is a big project actually in that market. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And it's very interesting already to, to look back for the last three years and see how much it has developed uh, coming from pure theory to actually come to life. But we need to be very specific about which license we, we actually talk. I think the new kids on the block and the ones we should focus on are the portfolio manager and the trustee. And those two follow rules that are familiar uh, from collective investment schemes regulation. So it's not entirely new, but I'm very glad to see that FINMA has also very pragmatic approaches on how to treat application requests. It's not a negligent approach at all, but FINMA seems to live up to its duty to support the competitiveness and the future viability of the financial market. And these two types of business activities are, at least in my view, two essential puzzle pieces of the whole big picture, the Swiss financial market. So talking about the future, I really hope to see this pragmatic approach to continue. And I really hope that ultimately it helps having a clean and prosperous financial market, which is, in the best case, uh, continuously recognized globally. Okay. And what tips could you give us regarding the license and what should we look out for, especially for the customers? Oh, that's, that's a difficult one, though. 
as a lawyer, I would say you need the best advisor possible. And uh, then he helps you jump over the rope. But in fact, I think the biggest difficulty in the whole process is that many portfolio managers, many trustees don't really have a very clear vision on what they want to do. And so I think most important it is that the financial institution has a very clear vision of what it wants to do, meaning that it knows where it wants to provide which service and to whom, that there is after that a real commitment to the strategy and not the moving back and forward, looking left and right. Because so far, I've never seen a case where a clear and realistic strategy was in fact stopped by FINMA. It always paid off if you knew where you wanted to end up and FINMA usually plays ball. And a little question beside on that is, do you think it will help the industry, this new regulation? I think it does. It, it helps getting a step up, which makes us being recognized, at least in the European market, as a fully regulated financial market. It helps globally as a label. We see offshore uh, industries are getting more and more to regulation, as we know it, from onshore industries. And so having a fully fledged license for portfolio managers and trustees is, in fact, a selling point. I don't think it's a detriment. Of course, it's not a pleasant process at the moment if you have done it for 20 years in a very light regulation under the IMLA. But in fact, having this full regulation now really helps being recognized as a fully licensed and also fully legitimate player of the financial market being on eye level with other financial institutions. Okay. And we really look for the Richmond Finance Summit in Lausanne in October. Could you give us a small teaser into your topic? The topic is FINMA license status and outlook. Yes, that's Where I'm we looking, are. For, <laughs> looking forward to, to this uh, summit as well. It's always a, a highlight to, to be a participant of such a summit uh, by Richmond. And the, the title, as you mentioned it, is, is uh, rather uh, dry and boring. But what I will try to do is highlight a few aspects for those that have fallen behind the field, um, uh, highlight other aspects for those that have already gotten the license, and also highlight a few points for those that think that they don't have to care because they work for a bank or other financial institution. So I think in the end, we will have a, a bunch of hot topics, a bit of uh, everything for everybody. But at the moment, the, the, the field is so scattered into different uh, situations that I think the best we can do is really address all of them and help them move forward. Okay. Uh, Nicolas, thank you very much for our podcast. We are really looking forward to welcome you at the Richmond Finance Summit 6th, 7th October. And uh, thank you for all of that. Thank you very much for having me.